Hi guys. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening here. Gorgeous autumn evening in August here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is Tuesday, August 19th, 2020, I believe. We're, I think we're going down to 52 degrees here outside of Ithaca, New York, and uh, we will not see 70 degrees tomorrow on August 20th. But, uh, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and this is my little co-pilot, the freshly laundered Sancho Panza. So anyway, at the end of this beautiful day of painting shutters green, just had to check in with my email and whatnot, just for a little dose of doom and gloom before I go pour a margarita and make some creamed corn. This coming in from my old buddy Reynard Loki sending in this little note for from Center for Biological Diversity. Uh, what is Donald Trump up to this week uh, as we head towards Civil War on November 4th? What is going on from the Donald the Trump administration just took another wrecking ball to the Endangered Species Act and wildlife will pay an awful price. The latest attack will make it much harder to protect the places where imperiled species could live and raise their young. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is pushing to redefine critical habitat and severely the severely limit the places where species can recover. This proposal breaks with decades of precedent and amounts to an extinction plan. Yes, it's also incredibly short-sighted and ignores what many species will need to survive. The Endangered Species Act has saved 99% of the plants and animals under its protection. Yes, this proposed rule would weaken the ESA and doom more species to extinction, undermining the fundamental purpose of the Endangered Species Act. And uh, you can draw your own dots between that story Many versions of this on the mainstream media, I'm sure, being covered elsewhere in the Doomosphere. <clears throat> this is the Guardian's version. Trump and final push to open up Alaska's Arctic refuge to oil and gas drilling. What a surprise. The Trump administration is taking the final steps to let oil and gas companies drill in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, you know, ANWR, which environmental advocates call the nation's last great wilderness. Uh-huh. The U.S. Interior Department will auction leases before the end of the year, <clears throat> which could make it harder for Democrats to reverse the decision if Joe Biden wins the election in November. Uh, the 19 million acre refuge in Northeast Alaska known as Anwar is a wellspring for wildlife. The move will open up the 1.6 million acre coastal plain where polar bears and foxes reside and to or through which millions of migratory birds fly. The porcupine caribou herd is critically important to the indigenous people in the area, many of whom make their homes on or near its migration route. Uh, this is Adam Colton, the executive director of the Alaska Wilderness League. Quote, this is our nation's last great wilderness. Nowhere else in the five nation circle polar north do you have such abundant and diverse wildlife. 
There you go. That's what's going on in the great state of Alaska as Donald Trump leaves no stone unturned. But guys, what I really wanted to talk to you is, <clears throat> this is coming out of Biscayne Bay in Miami. This just flashed on the mainstream media out of nowhere, got no play. So uh, I think that th th this, this article is such a perfect microcosm of everything that I talk about here on, uh, on Collapse Chronicles. This is apocaloptimism and hopium uh, on steroids. This is this, a, a last ditch effort to save Biscayne Bay. Uh, which is pretty much an open sewer like everywhere else in Florida. All right, from the Miami Herald. In race to prevent more fish kills, governments deploy pumps on Biscayne Bay shores. This is my new computer. I have not uh, learned how to use it yet. It tends to jump all around. All right. With the northern Biscayne Bay temporarily, temporarily starved of oxygen, huh? Environmentalists and governments are racing to use massive pumps to recirculate some of the seawater and pump it with air. There you go. Modifying a technique typically used in ponds and canals. In ponds and canals, a county fire boat spent Friday and Saturday pumping bay water into its hoses and then spraying it high into the air in the shallows near North Bay Village with the water mixing with air. Oxygen levels should be higher once the liquid returns to the bay. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, this is this is Todd Crowell, executive director of the Institute of Environment at Florida International University. Quote, in principle, taking low oxygen water from the water column and spraying it into the air should greatly increase the oxygen molecules that bind. Yes. Miami on Saturday began setting up pumps at the water's edge of several parts in order to create more oxygenated water. Yes, usually used to pump seawater from land back to sea. This time, the pumps will be used to pour bay water back into the bay directly after mixing it with air. There you go. Okay. This is Rachel Silverstein, executive director of Miami Water Keeper, the environmental group that's been rallying the response to a fish kill in the bay. Quote, this was a Hail Mary. Yes, it was. Uh, Water Keeper blames the die-off on low oxygen levels. And uh, guys, pay attention to this term. Low oxygen levels caused by a mix of high nutrients and unusually warm waters along with a lack of breeze to stir up the surface and allow more air to be absorbed by the waves. But it, well, at least we can look forward to the new hurricane forecast uh, that more and more hurricane forecasters are agreeing with me with my prediction that Florida, uh, well, Florida or Texas or the Carolinas, wherever, that the U.S. will get its ass kicked. Uh, over the next six, six to eight weeks, you will see I am still predicting a massive hurricane when I assure you there will be no pumps 
uh, pumping water into the air to prevent fish kills. But in the meantime, till those hurricanes get here, uh, Silverstein said the fish kill was almost certainly the worst fish kill in modern times for Biscayne Bay and a turning point after years of pollution unchecked, stormwater runoff, sewage leaks, and other factors that have killed seagrass and made the bay more vulnerable to algae blooms. Yep, that's a whole nother rant and other hazards to aquatic life. Quote, this is a known pattern of how a body of water dies. This is the bay on life support. That is exactly what it is. Silverstein Stetter Group contacted the county's Port Miami on Friday, which led to dispatching a fire boat from the port station to begin the pumping. Uh, this is City Commissioner Ken Russell commenting uh, in a Facebook post, quote, this, you, you know, pumping the water up into the air, quote, this is just a band-aid on a car wreck. You know, I, I don't even think he's mixing his metaphors here. This is exactly what it is. This is just a band-aid on a car wreck. Thank you. Uh, pumps are not a long-term solution and are being used in hopes of creating some shallow areas with more oxygen to be a refuge for fish fleeing oxygen depleted waters. Uh, Silverstein said, uh, Silverstein said, uh, she said, even if the pumps save some fish, Miami Day needs to rapidly address the Biscayne Bay crisis in order to preserve sea life there. Yes. Steps she wants to see include ending the use of septic tanks, good luck, replacing an aging sewer system, good luck, and creating a system to trap and treat rainwater instead of rushing it to the sea while collecting fertilizer, animal waste, and other pollutants along the way. Quote, we have been warning about this happening for years. And here we go. And if you like that story, you might also like blackouts loom again in California as emergency declared over wildfires. Yes. Uh, that's a whole nother rant, but I'm sure uh, Kevin is keeping us updated on on that uh, band-aid on a car wreck in California. Uh, what else do we have here? If you liked that story, uh, there you go. Giant pit in desert has been burning for 50 years and cannot be put out. What is behind the gates of hell? There you go. Uh, what is behind the gates of hell? Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, this just goes on and on, but I've had about enough I have got some uh, creamed corn I've got to make and a, uh, and a margarita to pour and then I got to put on some wool socks and a sweatshirt to prepare for another chilly night in mid-August. I noticed the maple trees already turning and the goldenrod bursting into bloom in the middle of August. 
don't know what that means, but I'm going to get out there and enjoy this beautiful autumn October evening in August. While I still can, I guess it's supposed to be back up near 90 on Saturday. Bye, guys. What is behind the gates of hell? We will find out on November 4th when Civil War commences.